Hello everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, June 3rd. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. Our special guest today is Mark Moran, and, and his topic is helping our students become the citizens the world needs them to be. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will now introduce Mark and ask him the newbie question. Well, thank you, Lori, and thank you, Mark, for joining us today. We are thrilled to have Mark Moran returning to Classroom 2 Live to bring us updates with several of the passions in his life, Sweet Search and Finding Dulcinea, Choose to Matter um, initiative he co-founded with Angela Myers, and Steps for Better Online Research. I'm sure many of you are familiar with his work with Angela on the Choose to Matter movement, as we could see from your poll results. Um, in his previous webinars, he told us all about Sweet Search, and as you may know, it is a very student-friendly uh, search engine. And today, we're going to get to hear about some of the latest plans and updates for that search engine as well as Choose to Matter. Mark's personal mission is to create products that help students become the citizens the world needs them to be. Such an important passion. They need to be self-aware, empathetic, empowered, creative, courageous, collaborative, innovative, well-informed and passionate agents of social change. So we're really looking forward to hearing all about how he does this. So thanks, Mark. And we'd like for you to take the mic in now and answer our newbie question, and then go ahead and advance with your slides. So here's our newbie question. What is a student-friendly search engine? And why is it important for classrooms? Uh, thanks very much, Peggy. And thank you again for having me again. I'm very, very excited to be here. It's a bit of a transition time for me, and I'm sort of reintroducing this concept as a whole for the first time. Um, a student-friendly search engine um, is, is one that will put more of the best results on the first page, and, and the best results being those that are most useful for academic research. And the way we do that with Sweet Search is um, we've actually licensed Google's technology, but we only have it search a subset of 5,000 websites that we have found to be the uh, most important sites for students to use. And as a result, some of the higher quality sites that we include um, that might show up on the fourth page of Google, and we know students never get to the fourth page of Google, may show up on the first page of Sweet Search results. So they'll see a lot more primary uh, sources and, and things such as that, uh, you know, academic resources, things created by professors, um, things that don't necessarily do well in Google will do well in Sweet Search. And of course, they'll, they'll, they won't see any uh, so-called fake news in Sweet Search. Every single site in there has been evaluated by us or our education partners and has been approved as being authoritative. It doesn't mean that everything in there is accurate. You know, if I put a newspaper in Sweet Search, I'm just saying this is a newspaper. It's authoritative. I'm not backing up every article they've written. Um, but I think more importantly, um, you know, I'm going to talk about a tutorial we've written on um, how to be an effective researcher. Um, we studied what other researchers do who are, who are very good, and, and even my own staff. Um, when my staff has a research assignment, on average, they use seven tools to find information. They, they, they may start with Google. They may start with Sweet Search and switch to the other. They then go to databases, they go to Twitter, they go to Reddit. They, they use seven tools on every single assignment. And you know, a lot of what I say today, I, I would be happy to engage in a discussion with you. This is one point that is just absolutely correct. 
you must be able to use what Joyce Valenza calls the full toolkit. You know, the full range of options for finding information about a topic. If you use Google only, um, you're missing out on so much that you could be uh, getting if you used other tools. And so actually um, part of the, the new strategy with Sweet Search is to encourage people to use more tools on every search. And we'll talk more about that uh, later on. Um, I want to start with the story of, of how I got here. Um, and, and my story starts on September 11, 2001, um, which we all know is a very dark day for, for this country and, and New York and, and the world. Um, at the time, I was a corporate lawyer. I was the general counsel of an internet advertising company in New York City. And uh, it was a very difficult time for small companies and in our sector. Um, there, there had been something they called the internet bubble from 1998 to 2000, where there were crazy valuations and we raised a lot of money and built giant infrastructures. And then it all crashed in a day. Uh, basically, when one journalist wrote an article that essentially said the emperor has no clothes. And um, we went through 18 brutal months, and then September 11th happened. And um, I saw a lot of it happen from my office window. Um, and then I, I tried to get home on the railroad, but the railroad was shut down. I thought there would be rioting in the streets, like the L.A. riots of 92. And so I went back and locked myself in my office till everything cleared, and, and I was able to get home. And um, when I came out on the streets, um, there was nothing but love. Everybody was hugging each other. Um, as it were, I ended up taking a subway home that got close to my house and then walked about a mile to the railroad station. I was in a very impoverished neighborhood, and people saw me walking in a business suit and were just stopping to hug me and ask me if I was okay. You know, they just wanted to be connected to somebody that was in Manhattan today. And it, it just really started to change my view of the world. Um, and then, you know, of course, the news then was numbing um, and, and came in tsunamis. Well, about five days later, I found out that my law school classmate, um, John Moran, had been killed. And um, John was a, a captain in the fire department. He was the youngest captain in the history of the fire department because he was such a brilliant man. And... Uh, I later learned that he had been off duty. He was leaving his um, fire station to go home when this happened, and he went anyway. And the last thing he said as he ran into Ground Zero was, I am going to make a difference here today. And, and this, of course, had an extraordinary effect on me, thinking that as he was saying that, I was hiding in my office. And it started to make me think, you know, I need to find something else to do with my life, you know helping this internet advertising company succeed it just doesn't do it for me anymore. Um, well, it took about six years to um, ride out the wave with the company and get it back into good shape and be able to sell it. Um, but in the meantime, I started thinking, you know, what is it that I was meant to do? Um, and another sort of formative incident happened when my oldest brother got very sick in 2004. Um, and he ended up passing away about 14 months later. Um, in those 14 months, there were all these ups and downs, and we have a large family, so there was almost always somebody out in Cleveland where he lived, visiting him in the hospital and getting snippets of information of what was going on with him and then sharing it over email. And it astounded me how ill-informed and ignorant my family could be in, in using the Internet. Um, I mean, they're all professional people. Um, my sister is a trial lawyer. She's the most skeptical, cynical, hard-driven person you'll ever meet. And she seems not fully capable of assessing information online. And a lot of this ended up with my mother, who, who also is a trial lawyer. She's argued before the State Court of Appeals, and she was believing everything she read online. And at some point, I finally shut this down and said, if anybody needs to look up anything, you ask me, and I'll look it up. 
Um, but it just blew me away, and I started asking lots of friends and family, like, you, you know, how do you find information online? And no one knew how to do it. And so I said, maybe this is it, because um, I had gone to grad school at night, both uh, business school and law school, which meant that um, I was using all these free tools, these free databases as a student, and yet because I was working, I had a sense of why these were so amazing to have access to. So I became very, very good at digital research, and I thought the Internet would, would give everybody access to these tools, and everybody would become a great researcher. Um, and, of course, we know that didn't happen. So that kind of became my mission. And so when we sold uh, my prior company, I formed Dulcinea Media and a website called Finding Dulcinea. And this was intended to, to help people find comprehensive and authoritative information about any topic, um, mostly by creating guides um, similar to what About.com used to be um, and the mining company, which was its name before that. And so um, I did that. And after about a year or two, I realized search was everything. You know, people just want to put words in a search box. And that's when we licensed Google's technology and created Sweet Search. And so those did very well for us, uh, but we were pushing them to a general audience. I wanted everybody to understand what we, um, how to find information online. Yet through a series of conversations with people, I found out adults just don't care. They, they want, they'll give you 30 seconds to inform them about a topic. Then they'll take 30 seconds to form an opinion about it. And then they'll spend the rest of their life defending to the death the position they formed in those 60 seconds. And so um, I, I also came to realize, uh, as we analyzed the traffic, all our best traffic, all the people that were coming in and staying and accessing other articles uh, were students or educators. And I said, we're an education company, you know, the accidental education company. And so I started going to conferences, and get, I got on Twitter. You know, I had a purpose for using Twitter now. I connected with all sorts of educators there. And so that's what we uh, went about. Around that time, my wife was very involved with the PTA, and in fact, she now works for the superintendent. And she said, you know, you keep saying Sweet Search is better than Google, but schools aren't using Google. Schools are using paper. They're using textbooks. You know, and this was 2010, and I realized she was absolutely right. And so, um, you know, we started rethinking, like, how do we do this? We're, we're early, which, you know, can be okay, but sometimes being early is as, as bad as being wrong. Um, around this time, I met Angela Myers for the first time, and she was very involved in lit digital literacy and social media. And so I met her at ISTE, and we had a conversation, and we kind of laugh about it now because she didn't understand Sweet Search, and she didn't like it. <laughs> so I explained it to her, and then she said, okay, okay, now I get it. No, that, that sounds great. Um, about a year later, she did her TED Talk, You Matter. Uh, she said two words um, can change the world if we understand them and leverage them in the right way. And... She then um, went into this giant social media campaign around it, but I didn't get it. You know, I thought her TED Talk was awesome, but it was a TED Talk, and it looked like this was becoming her life. Um, she uh, ironically became uh, close with my brother Brian. He's a, a small business guru, and he began to advise her quite a bit. And after about a year and a half, he called me up and he said, you know, Angela could really use your help. She, she may have some legal issues with what she's doing. And um, she, she needs business advice and financial advice. And I said, oh, that's great. You know, I'd love to help her. And, um, you know, she could really help me, too, you know, by promoting what I'm doing. So, yeah, I'll, I'll do that in an instant. And he said, what do you think of what she's doing? And I said, i got to tell you, I don't get it. It's simplistic. Um, I don't know where she's going with it. And it's freaking brilliant. It took me about five seconds to realize, uh, as Angela says, choose to matter gives genius a reason to show up. You know, just as I said, I, I, I've been on Twitter for a year, um, but I never really figured out how to use it or use it much until I had a reason. 
I had a reason. I had to connect with educators. And um, Choose to Matter challenges people to accept they matter, to share the message that everyone else matters, and to figure out what matters most to them and why, what breaks their heart about it, and what are they going to do about it. And then it encourages them to do it and to do it now. And so when you're trying to solve a real world problem, it's the purest form of authentic learning, of passion based learning. And I realized that that's what she was promoting, and, and, and it was brilliant. So I, I spent about um, six weeks, two months helping her and thinking, you know, I'm going to set her up and then go back to what I was doing. Um, and then she explained how well this fit together. She said, you know, I get them all excited and revved up to change the world, and you have the tools that help them figure out the right way to do it. And so we kind of started developing things that way. Um, and then she had, had planned this live event, again, almost accidentally. We, we, we were pitching this at an egg camp. And a teacher said, I could take this back to my students, but they won't listen. Um, you guys need to come in and pitch it to my students, and then they'll listen. So we were like, hey, wait, why not? Let's try this out and see what happens. And we showed up at a school, Downingtown STEM Academy. Um, ironically, I think it might have been June 3rd that we went uh, four years ago. And there were 350 sophomores. And he said, listen, they have to be here two hours. And then they're allowed to go home. Maybe 10% of them will stay. And we said, that's great. You know, 35 students is a test. That's awesome. And within half an hour, all these kids had their feet on the floor looking forward, saying, what is she saying? Did she say we're geniuses and can change the world? And these kids were blown away. And at the end of the day, they were all there. The next day, there were 10 more kids there. There were 360 kids there to the last day. Um, there was a kid that was supposed to miss the two days because she had wisdom teeth extracted. She showed up on the second day with an ice pack on her face. Um, and, and these kids were just, they, they, they had been set on fire. And I realized I wasn't leaving. Um, so that's how I got where I am. Um, my relationship now with Choose to Matter, you know, once everything happened last year with the fake news and everything we're hearing, I realized I needed to get back to, to Dulcinea Media and spend more time on Sweet Search. And um, so uh, I'm not formally affiliated with Choose to Matter and Angela anymore, except for this course that I've created. Um, it's an online course, and I'm going to tell you more about it now. Um, and, and this is a way for everybody to experience it, whether or not um, you know Angela shows up at your school. Um, there's a lot. Of, um, I, I share the um, slide deck in the live binder, so I'm not going to read from these things. I know you can read and, and don't want to hear me read. Um, they all have a lot of links. So where it says click a title to watch, we have Angela explaining what Choose to Matter is. Um, and then two videos made by the kids at Downingtown, that very first event we did. Um, and then just an image of, of how it's impacted schools all over the world. Um, so since that Downington event, we've done dozens of events. You know, I probably did about 20 with Angela. I think she's done 10 since on her own, or we, you know, with new team members. Um, everyone was the same. We, we walked in. There was a skeptical audience. They were like, what is this thing? Who is this lady? What is she saying to us? And by the end of two days, every kid was, was revved up, and I can change the world. And so I created a course that tries to kind of capture that in a bottle. Um, as we say, Choose to Matter is a call to action that challenges everyone to live up to their responsibility as citizens. Uh, here are some quotes from some of the principals um, who hosted Choose to Matter events. Uh, the first one, this is Downington is a STEM academy. It's a public school, but when they needed to form a new high school, instead of doing it geographically, they created one focused on STEM. So they got the highest achieving students there. Um, and he said, test scores don't matter. What matters is that students find something they're passionate about that can help others. And you can't put a price tag on that. 
And then Michael Pedraza from East Greenwich High School said, you know, so much of what kids learn is, you know, someday you'll need this information. And Choose to Matter takes that when and makes it now. Um, this is, uh, you, you can find this on um, the Microsoft blog. Um, a teacher in fifth grade in California, I think Manateca, California, Tammy Dunbar. Um, we, we had a curriculum called Liberating Genius that's now called Genius Matters. Um, that, that kind of is the introduction to Choose to Matter. Um, there's some overlap between the material. And but she used some of the material in both courses with her students last year. And she said it utterly transformed her classroom. And, and this is a, a high needs district. Um, she, she wrote three blog posts about it because she had so much to say and I somehow tried to boil it down into this one slide. Um, you know, I think one of the most important things we're learning um, is a critical skill is to be able to learn directly from other people and not just your teacher and not just your parent, but to be able to find the right person in the world to ask a question at the right time. Uh, Karen Blumberg, for those who know her from New York, uh, had that quote at a global uh, learning conference, and I absolutely loved it. Um, there are so many ways um, to learn directly from experts, and um, I'll put that article in the live binder when we're done. Um, that, that I wrote about six ways, but there's so many more. And she, we, because of the lesson she had her kids doing that, the bottom thing was she said she saw a shocking growth in test scores for her class. Kids went from getting 12 out of 20 to 16 out of 20 on the state math test. And she said she thinks that's because they're more confident and creative than they ever were before they did these lessons. Um, Grace Miner is one of the best stories of what came out of uh, what we did. Grace was a sophomore at the time. Um, she's from a very high achieving family. Her parents are both doctors. Her brother um, was the high school quarterback and went to Harvard. Um, he was at the first event. Um, Grace wanted to be a ballerina. She didn't want to go to college. She saw no reason for it. She just wanted to dance, and her mother said that was going to be a challenge because she's six foot one. Um, uh, Grace wrote an essay in eighth grade, and she won an award for it. And it was basically, when I grow up, I'm going to change the world. Um, when she heard we were coming to her school, she saw a poster in the hall. She just lost it. She went after the principal, like, what is this? Tell me more. I've got to know more. And he shared with her some of our writing and some of our videos and stories. And she, he wrote me three days later and said, one of the students has started without you. When we showed up, Grace had a full notebook of ideas for how she was going to change the world. She didn't need us. She just wanted to tell us what she had figured out on her own. Um, she has since done a litany of things. I, I wrote a recommendation for her for uh, a Coca-Cola scholarship that she ended up winning. She was one of uh, 1,500 out of 90,000 winners. Um, I, I felt like I was lying for all the things she had done um, since that event in terms of um, helping other girls um, feel more confident in themselves and, and believe they can. And she also won a U.S. presidential scholarship and was sent on an ambassador program to China. Um, she did go to college. She's going to Columbia University to study social justice and international relationships. And we have a video of her mother saying this all happened because she did that one choose to matter event. Uh, this is a tweet that she put out um, when she was at the Kennedy Center um, celebrating her presidential scholarship. Uh, and this was uh, a small community in, in Esterville, Iowa. Um, where we also did an event with the full district, and this was the local newspaper saying something remarkable happened in Esteville the other day. It's going to help kids for the rest of their lives. Um, and it talked about out-of-the-box thinking and empowerment and saying we should all try thinking this way because it just might help us solve the world's problems. Um, I'm 
happy to report that this goes well beyond schools. Um, mattering has been researched since the early 1980s. Um, it is beyond dispute that when you know you matter and that your actions count, your life changes. You're, you're a whole different person. Imagine if you woke up today, walked out into the metaphorical street and said, here I am, world. And everybody said, who cares? Go back to bed. No, you don't impact anyone. You don't touch anyone. It doesn't matter. Go back to bed. You know, what do you do? You go back in your house and you engage in antisocial behavior. Um, on the other hand, if, if the world embraces you and greets you and you feel like you can make a difference today, as, as John Moran shouted, like, wow, you, um, you, you really want, you, you can't wait to get out of bed. Um, I love that the quote at the top was an article in American School Counselor Association. Um, kids who know they matter have a sense of purpose and an enduring sense of intrinsic motivation and drive for continued school engagement and academic success. I love that there's 30 years of research backing this up. I love even more that I've seen this dozens of times, not just in schools. We've done it with um, uh, one group of uh, Southern church women, their average age was probably 65. And I think they were more touched than any other group we worked with. Um, this is just in the last year. In fact, two of these quotes are from the last month. It seems like the whole world is finally coming around to Angela's view of how critical these two words are. This is from Maria Shriver's blog from about six weeks ago. And she said, everyone the whole world over asked the same question. Do I matter? Am I worthy? And if you come to believe you're worthy, your entire life shifts. Change that vulnerable belief, and you can change your world and the world at large. It gets better. This is Eli Pariser. He uh, created Move On. He did the TED Talk called The Filter Bubble that became a best-selling book and was proven quite true last year. Um, he now runs Upworthy. And this is a commencement address he did a year ago. Um, he's talking about all the technological change that's drying up jobs. And, and it's, it's, it's making a lot of people matter less in their job. I mean, when you get laid off and told you're redundant, um, that's as, as profound a you don't matter statement as you're ever going to hear especially if you're fully invested in your job. And he said, hey, this is okay, though. All we need to do is be reminded that we matter, because when we're reminded that we matter, things get better. We're more likely to act as good citizens and be our best selves. It's like I wrote his speech for him. We're more likely to actually solve problems. And then he said, being reminded that we matter is the key to saving democracy and solving our biggest problems. Uh, this is Sheryl Sandberg in the New York Times, again, about five weeks ago, talking about how she kept her kids resilient in the wake of the tragic loss of their father. And she said, we owe our children safety, support, opportunity, and a way forward. We can start by showing them they matter. And as she knows, when kids don't feel they matter, antisocial, self-destructive behavior. So the course, which, which I hope launches um, Wednesday morning, uh, was first promised May 18th, <laughs> but we all know how these things go. Um, it's an online course. We want educators to take it. We don't want to just create student materials that you drop on their desk and have them do on their own, and, and, and you don't really believe what's in there. The worst thing would be if a kid decides, I'm a genius and I can change the world, and the adults in their life say, no, you can't. No, you're not. No, you can't. So we think this is utterly going to transform teachers. If teachers only took this course and the students never saw this material, school culture would change forever for good. Um, as it is, we, do, we will have student materials uh, mostly video-based, so it's really easy for them to consume. Um, my daughter teaches first grade in a high needs area, and I asked her how I need to customize the video for students like hers, and she said, my kids can understand any video on YouTube. 
They can't read very well, but they can understand anything they hear and see. And so this is all uh, video based for the students, a uh, mix of video and writing for the educators. We want teachers to accept that they have a genius. We define genius as the inspired output of hard work and not something you're born with. We tackle a very important concept in there, which is that even Einstein struggled, that there were no Eureka discoveries. Every great thing that's ever been discovered in science was because somebody worked really, really hard. Um, accept that you matter. Share the message that everyone else matters, and we have some powerful strategies for doing that. And lastly, um, act. Take collective, collaborative action to change the world by deciding what matters most to you and why, what breaks your heart about it, what are you going to do about it. Um, this is more or less what I just, uh, just said. Then once you're ready to act, come the products that I've been working on for years. Sweet Search today is something we actually invite educators to contribute to. Um, in the new iteration, we're, we're not going to write as much as we did on finding Dulcinea. It's more going to be just about finding the very best sources about any topic online. And so you see, you know, there's a biography of James Madison, the best websites for history and contemporary interviews. Um, it's not just going to be a straight list. It's going to be a narrated, kind of guided, curated list. Um, and um, but but not extensive paragraphs of writing, and we absolutely invite anyone. You know, we're not asking you to contribute a hundred hundred entries. Contribute three about the things you are most passionate and knowledgeable about. We feel this is the only way we will ever fully harness the web for students. Is if educators become the ones who um, curate it for them and package it up. And, and it will just become one other tool that students can use. One of the new channels on Sweet Search today is changing the world. And we will have all sorts of advice for how to change the world and stories of other kids who have changed the world and how they did it. What broke their heart, what mattered most to them and why, what broke their heart about it, what they did about it, what problems they ran into along the way, how they changed strategies, how they ended up succeeding. Uh, we have a page on Quora, quora.com slash choose to matter. If any student asks a question on this page, I will get an expert to answer it for them. Of course, they need to do their homework in advance. They can't come on this page and say, tell me what global warming is. You know, hopefully they've done all the background, they've looked up a topic, they have a strategy or thoughts towards a strategy, and then ask a more informed question. They do that, I will find a professor of environmental science to answer the question. Um, we will provide our own well-researched answer. Um, we want this to become a giant community of students and experts getting together. <laughs> Somebody said uh, it's not a replacement for Siri. You're right, Peggy. Um, Sweet Search, you can test out today, sweetsearch.com. Um, if for any reason that does not work, put a DEV, dev. .sweetsearch.com. Uh, we re relaunched a new version yesterday, so there's some um, propagation issues with the domain name. Um, Sweet Search is changing a bit. Um, Google has a new policy that you can only put 5,000 links into a search engine, a custom search engine, where we've had about 20,000. Um, we think it doesn't matter as long as we pick the right 5,000 sites. And so we're in the process of whittling them down. I actually had 80,000 total links in Sweet Search, and I've got it down to 40,000. I think that was the easy part. Getting it to five now will be harder. But we're going to get that done within the next month. Right now, Sweet Search is working, um, and it's working well. Um, it, it probably you, you may see too many of one one domain right now. But again, we're going to finish the, fix that in the next uh, 30 days or so. And it will remain the best search engine for students, the best place for them to start their research. Again, you don't use this instead of Google, or you don't use it instead of anything. You use it first, and then you go on to those other tools. We can't encourage that enough in terms of developing a life skill. 
Um, great news is that Sweet Search News I thought would be ready this week. It was ready at 4 a.m. And so that's news.sweetsearch.com. It searches about a thousand news sources. Um, it gives you the ability to see X US sources only. Um, and so I think it's really uh, going to be a great place to find news. Every single URL in there I have looked at personally and said, yes, this is a legitimate news source. Again, it does not mean I'm vouching for every article in every one of those news sources. It just means they're legitimate news sources. We'd love your recommendations for any sources that we're missing. And, and by news, you know, includes um, not just newspapers, but, you know, science news and tech news. It includes magazines like The Atlantic and Quartz and, um, you know, anything that's, that's kind of current events. Um, we, we plan to add to it. Uh, as we go, we thought we'd just start with these thousand. Um, I looked at it quickly this morning. It looks like it emphasizes the Guardian a little more than it should. They seem to be about half the results, but that's a very easy fix for us. We'll just downgrade it a little bit, and it'll show up a little less often. What we really wanted was we didn't want, um, you know, the New York Times and the Washington Post to be seven out of ten results. We want kids to see regional newspapers, foreign newspapers, local newspapers. And so Google lets us say, hey, emphasize the times and post a little less than you did. Make sure they still show up, but don't have them be, you know, seven out of ten results in, in every search. And so that's what we've done. We'll be tweaking that all summer, and we'd love your input on it. Uh, I missed at the, the very bottom, we also have Sweet Search history coming. So with Sweet Search being limited to 5,000 links now, um, it means we can't have 3,000 links that are just history resources. And so what we're going to do is create Sweet Search history with just 3,000 history sources. And why this will be great is it'll be a search engine that doesn't feature newspapers. And too often if kids search, you know, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, they'll get a ton of current newspaper articles about it and, and fewer historic or primary sources. And so this will only be um, sources that tend to be historic or primary. Um, think of all the presidential libraries, uh, all these university websites, they'll all be in there. And again, a, 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 a global emphasis. And so, you know, and if these are all well received, we can do sweet search science and sweet search math and sweet search literature. Uh, you know, we plan to roll them all out. Again, we want people to know there's a lot of different tools out there. But, you know, one of the most important things you need to know is every tool has powerful aspects and every tool has its limitations. And you need to know both of them. Uh, Ten steps to better online research. This is something I've been drafting for years. Um, I've been selling it through a vendor in a package for the last few years. And, and you know, they've done okay by us, not great. Um, I know it can be better. And so I'm taking it back in and, and just going to sell it on its own. Again, I want educators to take this course. I don't want you to just hand this to students. If educators, the, the, the main reason we have this fake news hysteria um, is because adults don't know how to search, and that includes educators, includes every group out there. Um, what I found, you know, with my own kids, um, educators don't have high enough expectations for kids' search skills. Um, my daughter, oldest daughter, who's the pleaser who listens to me, she was pulled up while leaving the classroom three or four times by a teacher saying, how do you find the things you find? This is amazing. And I, I was proud for about 30 seconds when I first heard this and then said, why isn't this the minimum price of admission? Why is this exceptional? You know? Um, and somebody said, ha-ha, daughter listens to him. Well, this next part of the story is the second daughter who does not listen to me, not a word I say. Um, and she once was in the library, and um, she was typing questions into Google. And my older daughter saw her and laughed at her and said, I'm telling Dad, he's going to kill you. So I confronted her about it, and she said, listen, I type questions into Google. I get answers from Quizlet.com. I put them in the paper. I cite it, and I get an A. What's the problem? I said, your teacher's the problem. Your teacher should be ripping that paper up and throwing it back at you. Um, so I want teachers to take this course and then share the materials with their students. Um, I, I make it as, I demystify it as much as I can, make it unintimidating. 
That's why we call it something very simple, 10 Steps to Better Online Research. It's going to be written in plain English, and um, it's really going to make everyone a better researcher. It's not going to qualify you to, to work in, uh, you know, a, a science institute, but it's going to make everyone a much better researcher uh, in, in, a, in a, almost like a quick and easy way. And lastly, in the fall, we're creating a news letter. The working title is Finding Common Ground. And this is a way we want to help people understand there's no extreme left and extreme right on every position, every issue. Yes, there's an extreme left and right. There's a lot of middle ground. You know, we can come together on this. It's what this country has been doing for 240 years. Um, we can do it again. And so, you know, on, on you know, Monday, we'll introduce an issue and all the facts about it. And then we'll start taking people's positions. People will submit by video and writing. We'll share what people feel and show the wide range of information, uh, of, um, the wide range of positions that can be taken on an issue. And we'll talk a lot about how to compromise, how to become politically active. Our goal, frankly, is to make the middle ground more politically active. You know, that we don't have everybody who calls their congressman coming from the extreme positions. We want the people in the middle to say, work this out. Um, so that's the end of the presentation. I think we have about 10 or 15 minutes for questions. I'll, I'll answer questions as long as you ask them. You know, I'll stay as long as you'd like. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. And uh, fire away. Thanks, Mark. I did capture a couple of questions. There may be more. Uh, somebody met, mentioned about not seeing very many tweets on the Sweet Search channel. Is there a new official Twitter channel for Sweet Search? Uh, no, that, that one is it. I, I've been tweeting a lot more from Mark E. Moran, uh -huh. um, but we will be much more active on Sweet Search going forward. Um, again, okay. it's probably. Uh, November or so when Angela and I kind of worked this new arrangement where I focus on the course. Mm -hmm. And so since then I've been in a dead run to um, get the course live and, and redo Sweet Search and Sweet Search Today. But we will okay. be much more active on Sweet Search going forward. Okay. Is there a way to integrate Newzella into Sweet Search? Um, I, I don't know. Um, it, it's certainly a possibility. I, I've had some conversations with them over the years, and uh, I'll certainly see them at ISTE again. And so I will um, talk to them. I, I think we do not include it yet as a source because it mm -hmm. requires registration, uh, uh -huh. and, and therefore I'm not sure it would search. But I'll, I'll look at that. If, if, if the Newzella results would appear in Sweet Search, I would certainly include it. Okay. Um, but you know, there might be a way to put Sweet Search on their site or something. I'll, I'll certainly have that conversation with them. What gives you the most hope today amidst all the fake news issues? Um, how eager people are to solve it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it has everybody's attention. Mm -hmm. um, I was afraid that it would last for two weeks after the election, but this is real. Um, there's been a surge in digital subscriptions to main newspapers. Mm -hmm. um, I've attended a couple of panels where journalists say they're getting more respect than ever. Um, you know, there's something about a um, president who's not popular with everybody attacking you. Right. Um, you know, they said people want serious um, gumshoe journalism much more now than they have for decades. Mm -hmm. um, I've also, you know, when I talk about the common ground idea, um, people almost hug me and say, you know, can you have that out tomorrow? Um, because a lot of people admit that they don't know where to get facts about something. And, and they want that. They want it right away. And so, um, so I, I, I see a lot of people really determined to, um, to solve this and, and start with themselves by becoming better informed themselves. Are you presenting at ISTE? Um, I am presenting at the um, there's a library network playground on mm -hmm. Monday morning. And so I will be presenting twice there. Um, and then I'll also be at a booth um, 
Desire to Learn or D2L is the course platform provider. Mm -hmm. And I'll be at their booth at 2.30 on Monday and 11.30 on Tuesday. I think it's booth 2005. And um, I'll be at the, the library playground, uh, I think, from about 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. Great. Are there ways for students to interact with each other on your Sweet Search site? Can they collaborate? Um, there, there isn't now, but um, Angela is actually working on that. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I, not on Sweet Search, but um, she's creating a Choose to Matter community. Mm -hmm. And um, I talked to the developer for the first time the other day to talk about how to integrate some of my stuff into the platform. And um, it actually sounds extraordinary what this person has. Um, you know, so many things are built on antiquated technology, which mm -hmm. is moving so quickly. And it sounds like she has something that she's built in the last year. Wonderful. And um, just incredibly flexible. And you know every concern, every question I have, like how are you going to do this? She had an answer for, hmm. and so I Great. think it's going to be fabulous. Um, they're they shooting to get it out by this day, you know, just as um, you know, all of my stuff was two weeks later than the developer promised. I, I would expect that there may slip, but but I'm really really excited about the Choose to Matter community site, and um, you know, we'll be doing whatever I can to help make that happen. What we want is, is people, students to collaborate with each other and be able to ask questions on the Quora page and then also have a platform where they connect with mentors. And um, there's a, a company called Nepris, N-E-P-R-I-S, that may build that for Angela. Um, somebody asked about it being translated into Spanish. Um, mm -hmm. We actually do have a website called Encontrando Dulcinea. And probably half of the articles on finding Dulcinea were translated into Spanish on Encontrando Dulcinea. And so it's really an excellent source. And, and they weren't translated, they were transliterated, meaning a native Spanish speaker did it by hand. Um, mm. And we had a couple of people doing it, so there's a couple of different um, perspectives there. What are some ways teachers can encourage students to be more constructively involved in politics? Um, so I think what they, they can do is, um, first of all, take the message of Choose to Matter, which is you can make a difference. And you don't have to wait till you grow up. Start today. Um, we do have some, we will have a lot of examples on the Choose to Matter, or the Sweet Search Today site under Change the World of kids who have changed the world and some of it by getting involved in politics. Um, also go to Facebook.com slash Choose to Matter. I share a lot of things there. Um, you know, there was, there was a story of an eight-year-old girl who, um, she was in um, South Carolina. And she found out um, the woolly mammoth, I think, was first in America in South Carolina, if I understood right. And so she put in a, a bid to make the woolly mammoth the official fossil mm -hmm. of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And some lawmakers tried to, you know, pull the whole creation evolution debate into the bill. And that stalled it. And this girl would not give up. <laughs> She like went public, she made a video, she held a press conference, and when the lawmakers found out they were um, getting in the way of this fierce eight-year-old, they melted mm -hmm. in seconds. And um, the, 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 she, the, the governor, uh, Nikki Haley, had her at a press conference where she signed the bill. And the girl said, listen, when you see something you don't like, you have to do something about it. You can't just stand there. And so we're trying to share as many stories as we can like that to make every eight-year-old feel like, you know, she did it, you can do it. Sure. Um, you know, and, then, and there's, there's, there's all sorts of, you know, there's so many stories I have to share of kids who wrote letters to companies or um, congressmen and, and got through. I mean, they want to hear from you. Um, I was with one group, this, this group didn't even realize in, in Rhode Island, um, their state senator was in the room with them talking them through a bill they wanted to get passed. And 
I, I, I knew they didn't realize who it was because one of them said, well, they, they would never listen to us anyway. We're just kids. And I said, who do you think you're talking to right now? <laughs> you know? And I said, can they come see you in your office? And he said, anytime. And so that's the way most, most politicians feel. And, um, and, and even better, um, of course, they respond to nothing like public pressure. So kids can start, you know, Facebook campaigns or Instagram campaigns or, or whatever they're using today to bring public pressure to bear on an issue. Um, and, and so, you know, that's why we're sharing these stories on Change the World. Like, this kid did it, you can do it. This kid wrote a book and raised $2 million for cancer research. You can do something like this, too. Do you have a, a link for that eight-year-old story? Um, I will uh, tweet it when we're okay. done here. But it's, it's on CBS News website. It actually was updated recently because she's now 11. Mm -hmm. And she's searching something about using something in the tobacco plant to cure something. And she'd been doing it for three years. And her whole uh, family farm was flooded. And she lost everything. Mm. And her attitude was like, huh, you know, I did it once. I can do it again. <laughs> you know, so um, just a remarkable kid. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, this is who we need to be holding up to our kids. Um, you know, and not these pop princesses as people mm -hmm. to, um, uh, you know, emulate. What strategies have you found are most effective when working with adults to encourage better information literacy, better search skills? You know, I, I think the most important thing is to make them realize that what I'm telling them, um, I'm adding what seems like unnecessary steps, but in the end it saves them a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, when I've had kids, I've taken kids through a whole session, I said, how much longer do you think it will take you to do search the right way now? And they said, oh, it's going to cut in half the amount of time we spend doing this. Um, I give the story of um, a time, I, I, the only thing I ever cook is chili. And when I cook chili, I make a long list very detailed this, and I go to the supermarket and I get every ingredient precisely right. Well, there was one time my wife was driving to the supermarket and I was driving somewhere else and she called me and we're both on our phones in the car and I just started rattling off the things I remembered. And um, I said some of the things wrong. I didn't say dark red kidney beans, I just said kidney beans. I didn't mm -hmm. specify the brand, it's made of sauce, etc. And she didn't write it all down so she forgot a thing or two. And when she got home, there was nothing I could do to make that chili taste good. Mm -hmm. I spent a long time trying, using different seasonings, looking through the cabinets to try and find stuff. I didn't have the raw materials I needed to make it taste as good as it usually does. And if we had just spent more time on the front end, you know, when I have everything exactly as I want it, I can't fail. I just mm -hmm. dump it all into one pot and cook it, and it's always good. And that's the way with search. Um, I, I used to insist that my staff write two articles a day, so they needed to do each one in about four hours. And because I was telling them they could do it, I had to show it by doing it myself. And I found when I first started, I would spend two and a half hours doing research and an hour and a half writing. But as I got better and better at the research, I started spending three hours and 15 minutes researching and 45 minutes writing because I wasn't even writing. I was just kind of linking together this awesome information I had found. And so, you know, that, that's my answer. If you find sometimes there's one link on the web that answers your question much better than anything else can. And if you find that one link, you cannot fail in your paper. Your teacher, your professor, whoever you're doing this for is going to be like, oh my gosh, look, they found this link. What a great source, what a great article they created because of it. And, you know, with adults, it can be something personal. You, you know, who you're voting for, a health issue you have, are you going to go work for this company or not? You know, sometimes there is one thing that's going to change it profoundly for you. Um, to give you an example, I was once down to 
two recent college grads I was going to hire to be my legal assistant. And I had an assistant counsel. And she really wanted Charlie, and I really wanted the other guy. And I said, I want the other guy because he found his own internship in China, and he did all these amazing things with this sneaker company in China, and he worked out a deal with Nike, and wow, what a go-getter. And she scoured the web till she found a social media profile in which he wrote, here I am at my internship in China that my father set up for me. I'm bored to tears. I haven't done anything all summer. She went out. She came in. Of course, the kid was gone. Like, mm -hmm. We hadn't hired him yet, thank God. And Charlie was working for us three days later. Mm -hmm. And if I had not found that one thing, I would have hired this kid under four zone pretenses. Mm -hmm. I can tell you so many stories like that. I, I once got a call from my old company, from their law firm, saying, Mark, we need you for one day. You know, we know you were heavily involved in patent litigation. We're trying to find a specific document. Uh, you know, it will make or break what we're doing here. And, and you can spend 10 hours. You can charge us your max rate. We don't care. Just try and find it. And I spent four hours trying to find a particular document. We didn't know what the document was. We just had a feeling something like this existed. After four hours, I found it. And they gladly paid me well to, to find it. And it was the one document on the web that was going to make or break them. Um, I once wrote an article about Rafer Johnson, a biography. And I used Google only because I wanted to see what it was like to use Google only. And the 53rd result was some Sports Illustrated ball. Uh, for, for those who don't know, he won the decathlon in the 1960 mm -hmm. Olympics or 19, yeah, 1960 Olympics. And I found an article about him from 1957 in Sports Illustrated Ball. All of his primary sources, uh, his preacher talking about what a gentle man he is. I was like, this was the one document that makes this biography awesome, and nobody else has it. And you know, it took two hours to find it, but it was well worth it because. I didn't have to write. I just needed to quote the preacher. Mm -hmm. Have you thought of expanding the program, and I'm not sure which one, uh, in Latin American countries like uh, Argentina? If, if you meant choose to matter, um, you know, I think that's certainly a possibility. Again, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Angela is running the movement now. Mm -hmm. um, we would certainly. Um, if the course does as well as we expect it will in English, we will certainly translate it into other languages. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, Spanish would obviously be a natural first one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Angela has gone to Canada, to London, to Australia to do these programs. Um, so, and I know she's considered um, bringing on people to train and do it. But you know, I don't know if she plans to do that. If, if you meant the other side, um, the, the sweet search side, again, on Comprando Dulcinea mm -hmm. is our answer to that. OK. Those were the questions I was able to capture in chat that hadn't been answered already. OK. So thanks so much, Mark, for presenting right, to you. us today. Uh, again, the course is at mark dot, no, I'm sorry, markmoran.com slash C2M. The link should be live by Wednesday. Um, it's $99 per teacher, but we'll have a 20% discount code. Um, it's Mark PLN17, and that will get you a 20% discount. Um, and so yeah, go to markmoran.com for anything else, or tweet me at markemoran, or email me at markemoran at gmail.com. Thanks so much, Mark. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will tell us what's coming up next. Thank you so much, Mark. We Thank are you, totally inspired. This is just great. I know people are going to enjoy going back through the live binder and kind of watching some of those um, videos that you've mentioned and definitely checking out all the new things that are starting to happen with Sweet Search and everything related to that. Very exciting stuff.
Thank you. I hope that you'll all come back to join us next Saturday. We have another amazing guest. Nikki Robinson is going to be joining us as our featured teacher librarian. And those of you who may know her know what incredible things she does for her students, for her teachers, and we're going to get to hear all about them. On June 17th, we want you all to come back. That's our open mic show to wrap up this year right before our summer break. And we want you to come and tell us about what's on your summer bucket list. Paula Noggle is going to facilitate that. And we want to hear from everyone, whether it's personal, such as travel or going to a family reunion or anything like that, or professional, going to conferences, taking courses, workshops, ed camps, whatever it is, we want to get inspired by you. So plan to join us on June 17th, and then we'll be taking a break through the month of July, actually through ISTE and the month of July, and then we'll be back on August 5th. Please, if you can't go to ISTE, be sure to join the Google Plus community for not at ISTE. We have tons of great things planned. You'll be able to see lots of videos um, and live streams of presentations from ISTE, but we'll be having some of our own. And we'll have some challenges that you can participate in. And it's just a great time. So plan to uh, join that group and keep up to date with the upcoming um, happenings there. So thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Harkadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar, where you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session. And as long as it's uh, open to the public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher at this site. There's also a link in the live binder to do that. You can nominate yourself as well. The video archive for shows are on iTunes U. When you exit the session, the survey should open up in your browser. Or you can take the link from the chat. Or it's also in the live binder. When you complete the survey, at the bottom, you can request a professional development certificate. It now prints out with your name, thanks to Patty Ruffing, and she sends them out. Uh, make sure you request this to be sent to a personal email address. Schools tend to block these from getting to you. Special thanks again to Mark Moran, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate, for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming.